Looking into the next like three to five years, we will continue to see different driver and risk like geopolitical tension continuing to affect the global supply chain. In addition, climate change, natural disaster, pandemic, new energy policy and inflation are also accelerating the supply chain transformation. Tech giants like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla are always playing a main role. Semiconductors are more likely to influence economy and the national security in a longer future. Finally, I want to hear more from everyone here. Try to imagine what the global supply chain would be like in three to five years, and how would be the top three driver and risk that will accelerate the transformation of global supply chain in the near future. So hi, Brad. Um, you want to make some comments on this based on developments of telecommunication industry? Yeah, Jill, thanks. Um, I think that you kind of de described them as we've gone through this discussion, but certainly there's a geopolitical element to it. Mm -hmm. um, that's a risk to the supply chain. I think though uh, particularly uh, challenging is the semiconductor supply. So how do we build a robust, um, resilient semiconductor supply chain that continues to deliver against the promises of Moore's law, but also continues to deliver the diversity of um, more than more um, that where we're seeing uh, the, these chiclets and the um, 3D packaging that's going on that, that is so important to continue the integration. And then the, the last is really the climate and uh, health concerns. And whether you describe the health concerns as uh, ESG or um, pandemics, but I don't think we've seen the last uh, global health issue. Um, that, that we're gonna to have to face. Uh, and the climate certainly appears to have become more uh, difficult to predict and causes more severe disrupt disruptions um, to our sophisticated supply chain. Hi, Brad. You mentioned semiconductor will continue to influence the global supply chain. Could you elaborate more on this with more example in the telecom industry? Yeah, well, if I, think about just transistor count and a transistor count is important in telecommunications but it's also important in data centers and uh, electric vehicles um, mm -hmm. as i was looking i think tesla just came out with a chip that has 50 billion transistors in it and that rivals the transistor count of the processors that people uh, put in pcs or data centers uh, and that's going into a car so we're seeing a um, we're seeing how important Moore's law and these advanced lithographies are to continue to create value and and uh, interesting products. And that lithography is based on really the the uh, X-ray lithography coming out of one company in highly highly specialized. Um, single sourced equipment. Mm -hmm. And so how do you build a robust supply chain when you have something that is both exotic and, and uh, difficult to get from a single source? And I don't have an answer to that problem, but I just see that that's a, a barrier to continuing the growth and expansion that we'd all like to see. Thanks, Brad. Next questions uh, go for Prince. What are your top three driver for future transformation of global supply chain? Thanks, Joe. I believe it, uh, you already mentioned that the uh, semiconductor and also the geo conflict, and it's also the still will continue to, to influence our the supply chain for the near future. And also the another one is uh, ESG also is very important for that one. Uh, also, you mentioned that the, all the big guys, they are try to the, set up some, the, they are on the game rule for that one. And uh, for the 
this ESG, I think that we, we have only one earth that I think is very important. The concept is that we are, we are, we have only one earth. So the, how is the, to, to keep this can maintain. So the ESG also became the very, very important for the, the future for the supply chain, especially for the, this, uh, the, the, the first one, the E, the environmental, this kind. So the, I think the, this one will be also will be dry the supply chain because of the, how you maintain your company to be the more the ESG rating, this kind of thing. So as our eminent, we are ESG rating is the, in the low risk area is about the 10.2, this kind of the range. So I think it's the low risk, that one. That is also, we will dry the, the, our company to be the mm. more the, the M on the list to be the ESG the direction. Thank you. Thank you. The same question goes to Josh. What are your top three drivers for future transformation of global supply chain? I think it's a, it's a very difficult question because I think sometimes it changes daily, you know, but, uh, but, I, think, but I will say that uh, for people who, who, who understand and experience globally, companies which are experienced globally, uh, at least I think, I think three things are, are the top three, in my, in my opinion, uh, remain the same. I think we have to be, uh, and I'll, I'll call it ESG, but, but I think um, in ESG, I'll, I'll, I'll say that uh, the DEI, uh, the diversity, uh, you know, equitable and an inclusive part of the, this is very important as we expand into new geographies. I think we have to be, very sensitive, uh, you know, to the, the 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 communities, you know, where we where we operate. In. I think it's ESG. I think would be very very important as we go forward. Number two, I will say is all global value chains. Um, uh, you know, I think I think Brad used the word. They've been uh, sort of uh, over optimized, and 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 I think that the key is now to in a way go back. To, to the good old days of, of having um, a self-stabilizing supply chains. So I think people who are running global value chains uh, will uh, look at how do you achieve this uh, you know, self-stabilizing supply chains. Uh, Gartner's latest report, uh, which came out recently uh, in, in, in supply chain ranking is actually paying a lot of emphasis. And, and, and I believe that this is very, very important and of course, I think we all have to be very, very aware of the geopolitical situation. Uh, it is going to continue to evolve. I think uh, we live in a VUCA world and geopolitics is going to change. Uh, there will be regional uh, topics. There will be uh, geotopics, which is something which all global leaders need to be well informed and have the right kind of mitigation plans to, to, to sort of make, ensure that there is no disruption in the supply chain. Many of you mentioned about ESG. I think Kali uh, maybe want to share some of your observation, like how ESG is driving the future and transforming the global supply chain. We discuss many issues about the environment because today's pressure will be the future risk. So people pay attention on that kind of things. But I would like to emphasize another thing about social and governance. So what means about social? You may didn't know. End of last year, we have 950 unicorns over the world about. 51% from America, 20% from China, about 5% from India. So today, I believe India has about 50 unicorns. But most of the unicorns, they raise a lot of funds from the society, but they didn't realize or materialize all of the process into the society. So companies like Google, Amazon, even Microsoft, they have huge assets, but how to materialize the kind of resources into a society resources. So they will be very important. I believe 
they will be the key issues. Why Trump administration and the Biden administration emphasize to recontrol the supply chain again. And not only 5G, rare earth, battery, or semiconductors. But also, we, we need to think about, as I emphasize again and again, job opportunities. They're good for everyone. We need to help people to get a good job, security, secure job. So I talked to my many industry leaders' friends to help other countries to build their local industry. And because especially after PC stage or mobile phone stage, we are getting into IoT stage, there's a, we need button-up approach to work with them. Secondly, Brett and uh, George also mentioned about servers and the cloud services. Who provides servers? Who built hyperscale data centers? Today, I believe we have about 700 hyperscale data centers all over the world. And may, you may didn't know, more than 90% of the servers motherboard also produced by Taiwanese makers, includes Foxconn. So Joe must know very well about that. So I knew that, but we need to help the companies like Reliance in India to build their data centers by themselves. So which is not the opportunity for specific country only. We help global basis. Thirdly, we need to think about how to help people to understand the supply chain behind the talent pool. So country like India, you have so many good people work in the industry, but you need practice. You have IT design talents, but why you don't have IT design industry? You know, the biggest one is America. Second one is Taiwan. Taiwan has about 24% worldwide IT design industry market share. Taiwan, as I mentioned, 23.5 million people. We have 24% market share. Why India cannot do that? So once I talked to Dr. Sharma to exchange program to build maybe 1,000, 5,000, even 10,000 talents to Taiwan for exchange program. Or we help you to build not only, not only India, but also like Malaysia, like Thailand. We are very happy to do that. Otherwise, we cannot satisfy the people. They need help from Taiwan. So I always talk talking the things like this, that way. Finally, I would like to emphasize another thing. It's about the digital business. You may didn't know. Maybe this time is only one or two percent of Taiwan media industry market. And we are one of five million revenue of Taiwan electronic industry. Five million. So it's very small. Even we make huge profit, but that means a lot. But there is a key to open the door. So India also need to build information for supply chain to exchange with other countries then we know what you are doing what you are what you are doing now so we didn't know Noida we didn't know Bangladesh uh, so we, we need to know more things about South Asia then we know how to help you to work with Bangladesh Sri Lanka or even Pakistan so there's a way we have to work together so that's what I suggest to you thank you Thank you, Kali. Finally, we're going to wrap up the sessions. And I want everyone here to give a final advice for the company and maybe show them some solutions, suggestion to stay resilient in the future market industry in order to have a robust ecosystem supply chain. Well, I think what I'd say first is 
I hope that the next 20 years has as much growth and excitement in it as the last 20 years. There has been just tremendous progress in how the world has built out both in terms of its manufacturing capability. And as Kali said, you know, we've seen things move from uh, the US to Japan, to Korea, uh, to Taiwan. We've seen manufacturing uh, move into China, into India. Um, and so that continued focus on what are the activities that we need to take on the challenges we need to conquer so we can continue this fantastic growth and prosperity that has occurred over the last 20 years. How do we continue that? Thank you. How about Josh? I think um, for companies to be successful, I would say, uh, especially in our, our sector, uh, you, you have to understand that VUCA uh, is, 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 is a stand. I think you have to assume that you're going to be in a volatile, unpredictable you know, environment going forward. I think uh, companies should select a business strategy which works for them, which plays out their strengths. I think that's probably very important. Uh, I have to tell that um, I have been using uh, you know, colleagues uh, on uh, this disconnected ICT supply chains. Uh, it has been sitting right next to my Bible the last two years, and uh, and it has been very very powerful. And uh, so I picked a lot of uh, ideas from you, uh, your book, Kali, uh, as we frame strategy. And of course, we need to select what what makes what works for us uh, as as companies. Uh, secondly, I think we should uh, look at an operation strategy which is going to work for you. I think work for that. Uh, you know, how do you, you know, create a, a self-healing supply chain or, or a self-stabilizing supply chain? Uh, all these things are going to be very important. So we have to be very agile. I think it's a mindset uh, to, to ensure that the, any disruptions is, is sort of countered with the right kind of mitigation plans uh, so that, so that the, the customers are serviced well. Um, Last and most important thing is in a, you have to build the ESG into your system, and uh, and I and I really echo Kali's view on the social aspect of things, skilling, training, uh, being a part of the community, uh, especially the last two years with COVID, uh, it is it has reemphasized the importance of being with the community, being with the people, uh, being with the governments working very closely with them. So please build that as a part of your, uh, you know, your, your uh, you know, business plans. And, uh, and I think it's going to be very, very important for uh, really the, as, as, as Brad said, the next 20 years of, of, of a sustainable, uh, you know, sort of future uh, where there is a win-win proposition. So with that, I really uh, thank Digitimes, Kali uh, and team for this honor. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, Prince Yun, could you provide some of your advice for companies? Uh, we, Mnet, we are provide a suite of the supply chain capability to support the business and from the demand, uh, from the design to the delivery. That's mean that we uh, say that from the design the stage, we have the company to have some in the to provide you some component suggestion. And uh, after that, uh, this I will tell is about the ecosystem. And uh, and when you need some the small quantity, we have the another company is called Fanel to support this one. And you have the major the warren production. We have also have the Mnet, we have the biggest uh, team to support that one. We also have the end of life, this kind of the support for the the, the all the supply chain that means the from the design to the delivery i think this very important from end to end this, this concept we are provide this kind of the eco hold the ecosystem to the customer thank you finally let's welcome Kali to make a final remark for today's forum my good friends i'm very happy to let you know i'm writing my next textbook 
It's about semiconductor and the geopoliticals. That could be the textbook for Taiwan's major universities. But anyway, I came back to Taiwan, as I mentioned, in 1985. That year was a taking off year of Taiwan, and the Taiwan government recruited 20 young men to study the industry and formulate strategy for the country. And second year, I was assigned to Shinzo Science Park to write the business plan, industry plan for Science Park. Then I in charge whole country statistics system. And the government sponsored me to major countries all over the world. I even was the first keynote speaker between both sides of Taiwan Strait in Beijing in 1990. And I was the first man to go to India in 1992. So I traveled to more than 300 major cities all over the world, and mostly they are industry cities. So I was invited by many countries like Canada, America, Japan, Korea, to present them how Taiwan succeeds. OK, that's what I'd like to suggest India. Also try to organize a task force for this purpose. 36 years, years ago, government spent two or three million US dollars to train 20 young men. I'm the youngest one, so I'm still working. And I was the first man. And today, I always say that I'm the most senior industry analyst in Taiwan and got very good training and grew up with the industry. So 25 years ago, when I started start up my own business, I made a phone call to 40 industry leaders to ask them to give me money to build these times. Now we are industry baby. So Taiwan has the best, most up-to-date high-tech supply chain information. This is the operation. And speak frankly, we are profitable. Even we got pressure from Google, Facebook, internet giant, but we are successful. So we have two, more than 200 people work with me, and we are expanding now, still expanding. So I will try to build my English version for longer term. And absolutely, I will co-work with companies like Foscon or TVS in India. And uh, also like to co-work with Teledyne, your parent companies in the future. So I, I always say that Taiwan is the key to open a new door. And uh, I'm very happy to become a key person in this kind of new things and uh, good for prosperity for everyone, not only for Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you for your join. Thanks for everyone's feedback and participation for today's forum. In a highly uncertain environment, the global supply chain is set to reshuffle. It's increasingly important for a company to have a good control of their production and outsourcing plan from the upstream to the downstream. We hope today's discussion can help you to stay competitive in order to maintain a leading position in your industry and market. Thank you for your participation and see you soon in the next ASC 100 Forum. For more information about Digital Asia and ASC 100, please check our website. Thank you.